What's going on guys and gals? This is AutoTech. Today we're going to be replacing the clutch, uh, the inner basket, and the pressure plate. Uh, the only specialty tools that you're going to need is a specialty Triumph clutch holder. Uh, you could probably figure something out at home or buy some off make one. I grabbed the one from the dealership. It wasn't too expensive. Uh, I'll show it once we get to that point. Um, basically, I've been pretty hard on my clutch. This is the second clutch in the bike. I'm running a Barnett. Uh, so today's video is actually with a Barnett clutch. So it'll be slightly different than the factory one. Not a big deal. Um, yeah, let's get to it. It doesn't really matter which end you start at, but uh, you're going to have to loosen your cable right off. So all that is is a 12 millimeter and you're just going to wind that out. Um, basically you want this one all the way in so that you can go like that and then um, we're gonna go up to let's put this down here we're gonna go up to this one and then you're going to wind this one all the way in so as you can see just by doing that lower part I did get this top part pretty loose uh, but we're gonna still just wind that all the way in basically you just want as much slack on the cable as possible. Now, if you're replacing your clutch cable, they don't come with a new collar and adjuster. So I'm never a fan of people that use pliers on these because it damages it and then it doesn't actually come with the cable. So just keep that in mind. Now that you've got that cable totally slacked off, just lightly push on this arm, grab a hold of the cable while holding this upper pivot point and then you kind of pivot it towards you a little bit and there you go that's disconnected once again I'll just show you that push the arm a little bit towards the front make sure you just kind of keep your fingers on this pivot point push the cable and now that is out so according to the work instructions we have to remove this protective cover um, I can't remember if it gets in the way because uh, it's been a couple of years since I did this clutch However, uh, it's only three four millimeter Allens and you know, it, it, it doesn't take very long to pull it off. So let's go ahead, get this off. What I would recommend is keeping organization of the nuts and bolts. So I made a little baggie that I called clutch cover. So I'm gonna put these three in it and then I'll put all those bolts into it so that when I take this actual cover off, uh, I'll be able to keep track of them. Um, now this bike hasn't run for about a week now just due to it being winter here So I don't think there's gonna be a whole ton of oil in here But it's never a bad idea just to have a little bucket just in case you go to pop this cover off And then you're gonna need to try and catch some of that oil. So let's get this uh, protective cover off I mean not too protective. It's made of plastic, but you know what I mean. Let's get that off now something that isn't in the work instructions, like if you did actually pay for that uh, Triton manual, or I guess now it's like Triumph instructions or something like that, is you have to get this brake switch out of your way. Um, you can see the bolt that's like right behind it. So in order to do that, it is just two T40 Torx. And yeah, you're gonna remove these two bolts and then you can get this little cover out of the way and then that switch will pop out. So once the two bolts are out, you can see that those are what hold this switch. Now I wouldn't worry about like actually like removing the switch. All you gotta do is just like from there to there. You know, I've still got the spring hooked up and everything. And now I've got really good access to that bolt. Uh, if I have to a little bit later on, which I don't foresee because the clutch cover is gonna come out, clear this. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that the switch being right here is gonna be an issue. So now all of these other bolts are really easy to get at, except the two of them. You read the work instructions and it says, oh, just remove the bolts. And you're like, oh, okay, that's cool. Like I can see all of them. It looks like I've got really good access. These two, 
you can't just go straight in with a socket for some reason. So I'm gonna get set up and then I'm gonna show you what it was that I had to do in order to get those two out. And something else to point out, uh, just before we get going with taking these bolts out, there's two different length bolts. Now the nice thing about Triumph is they're lazy and they typically put them with the dowels. Now just keep that in mind, because if you just start ripping these out and you're like, oh, I'm gonna leave the two hard ones for last, as you're throwing them in the bucket, just remember that there are two that are a different length. So I just wanna quickly show you, because you're probably thinking the same thing I thought originally. So I've got your standard eight millimeter quarter inch. You can't get on it. Then I've got an impact swivel. Can't get on it. Then I've got the non-impact swivel. Still can't get on it. Like you can almost sorta get to it like right there, but there's no way that you're actually gonna be able to break that bolt free. So unfortunately, sockets aren't gonna work on this one. All right, so I'm gonna kinda keep my view here on the phone just so that I can actually show you what's up and make sure I'm actually showing it. You're gonna have to take an eight millimeter wrench and you're gonna have to reach in between the exhaust here and then you kind of come up and then you can get onto that bolt. It's a little bit easier when you got two hands, but now you can see that we're actually on that bolt. Let's see here, yeah, you can see it. And uh, unfortunately, yeah, that's how you're gonna have to take that singular bolt out. Now, once you get it far enough out, it should actually be loose enough and it'll be far enough forward that you should be able to get the socket onto it. So I'm gonna start with this one because it's the crappy one. And uh, yeah, I'll check back in with you guys once I've got that bolt out. Okay, so I thought I would just check back in. I've got mine quite a ways out now, but it's too far out now to get the uh, closed end on. So unfortunately, I've had to switch to the open end. So that means I have to hook the bolt, turn it, there, let's, let's make sure I'm in the right view here. Hook the bolt, turn it, back it up, flip this, get on it, turn it. Um, I'm just guessing that's because I ride through so much weather. Uh, usually you get the bolts out a little bit, it breaks up whatever Loctite is on, because these are thread locked from the factory, so even if this is your first time doing it, the bolts are a little bit tough for that first little bit, but then usually you get to a point where you can get your two fingers on it, get it out of there. So I'm continuing to work on this. I just wanted to point out to you that if you kind of hit a point where you can no longer get the closed end on it, you're gonna have to switch to the open end and just quarter turn at a time. <laughs> All right, I've got it to a point now where it's loose enough that I can do it by hand. So now you can just kind of get your fingers in there, keep turning it. Um, I guess if it was still just a touch too tough, you could, I don't know, maybe get your hand in the back there, but, uh, all right, that one is out. Let's proceed with some others. <laughs> all right. So my memory was wrong. Uh, that other bolt that is just directly below it, you can actually get onto it. No problem. So that one is out now in a second. Yeah, there we go. And let's compare that here. No, nope, that one's still the same length. All right, so let's proceed with removing more, all of these actually. And then, um, yeah, I'll check back in with you once I get all of these bolts out. Um, just, yeah, remember to pay attention to which two are the longer ones, which I'm hoping is this one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now you can see that that is a much longer bolt. So, yeah, that one was this bottom side here, and then I'm gonna guess the other one is right there. And I bet you once we get that cover off, there'll be some uh, dowels that are there. So, see you in like 10 bolts. All right, so I decided to, yeah, hopefully this is the correct light to use, I decided to leave this bolt just slightly in so that when I take a flat blade screwdriver and go from here to here and give it a light pry just to break it free that the cover doesn't just pop off and hit the ground. Um, now in my videos I always try to use tools that are common in your 
in your garage, right? Like, you know, like for me, like I've got a little bit of a different setup just because I, I work on vehicles professionally for a living. So I've got a lot of tools that like the average person wouldn't have. So I always try to do the removals with basic tools. Um, so yeah, just be patient. You know, you can kind of work it around there. There's a little bit of a spot down in there that you could kind of come through on this backside. If you do happen to have like what's called a lady heel or like a 90 degree pry bar, you could probably get it a little bit in there, right? But I was able to just break mine free right up there. So now I'm gonna go ahead, remove that bolt, slide this out, and uh, then the cover will be off. So I just thought I'd show you the actual process of removing this cover. So we're gonna rock that a little bit. and out that comes now if you noticed the clutch arm actually moved a little bit because when you're going back in you're going to hook this and then the arm goes back like towards the front so we will cover that when we're going back together but uh yeah this is this is off now so i'm gonna go ahead and just set that upside down so that any of the oil will drain out. And now, if I remember correctly, we, oh yeah, no, this doesn't come out till after we take the pressure plate off. So you wanna have it in gear when we're taking this pressure plate off. And uh, for some reason, the work instructions say second gear. I don't know if that truly makes a difference, but I'm gonna put it in second gear and then, uh, yeah, we'll be okay there. And as I pointed out earlier, the dowel and then the other dowel must still be in the cover. Yeah, so we will transfer these over to the block a little bit later on. It also helps having the dowels up on top of the block because then it will help keep the gasket in place instead of having your dowels on the uh, cover. All right, so moving on to a different bag that I labeled inner clutch. You're gonna take a 10 millimeter and you're gonna just do these a quarter turn at a time in a star type pattern. Now, the reason you do that is all of these are spring loaded or they've got a spring underneath them. So you basically just, you don't wanna like cock the thing super sideways. Now I'm doing pretty well all of this with a quarter inch ratchet. Um, and I'm, as you can see, I'm really not even like holding it that far down the handle. So everything is fairly low torque. So, you know, definitely don't be beating the hell out of it. So yeah, this takes a little bit here. Just keep, keep working these out quarter turn at a time. And, uh, before we pop this plate off, um, I'm going to show you what's up. So you're going to find that those bolts are pretty long. So eventually you kind of hit a point where the bolt is no longer touching this spring. So then you're pretty well safe just to wind that bolt out the rest of the way. Um, but as you can see, like those springs are pretty long. So you definitely wouldn't want to just take that out because then it's going to create a bunch of uneven pressure on it. Um, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, these are kind of one assembly. So you really don't have to worry too much about uh, losing a bit or a piece or something like that. I'm gonna move this over, move these over. All right, so now we're good to go for this pressure plate. So we're gonna pull this out like that, basically just straight out. And then this pin comes out on the inside. So what you want to look for is you want to look for any sort of bluing. Here, let's see if I can, all right, there we go. What you're looking for is anything that catches your fingernail, any sort of bluing. Um, I'm going to replace this pressure plate. Uh, it was actually really affordable. Uh, like I want to say it was like $45. Um, and it does not come with the bearing. So we're going to have to install a new bearing. Um, but the the reason behind doing this clutch was i was starting to find that even with the clutch all the way in properly adjusted i was starting to like kind of catch a gear if you know what i mean like you know i'd be shifting gears and i could kind of feel it going like you know like as it went by 
Um, and I have been pretty hard on this thing, like with clutch ups and slipping the clutch and stuff like that. Um, it doesn't look as worn as the factory one. The factory one was cooked after 35,000 kilometers. And now this one's got 60 something thousand kilometers on it. So the Barnett is the way to go. But yeah, so we've got the pressure plate off. Uh, I'm just gonna leave this in here like that for now. I'm gonna go ahead, add that to the tray. And then from there, what you gotta do is you have to take out each individual clutch piece. Uh, yeah, you could grab a bunch of them, but you know what? It's, it's your bike, just take your time. Grab that individual piece. And then uh, what we're gonna do, well, this one's taking the steel with it. Um, we're gonna basically like rebuild the clutch pack kind of face down so that when it comes time to reassemble, you know that you take each piece off and it goes in. What you're looking for on the steels is the same deal. Any sort of scarring, any sort of deep bluing. These ones are actually in pretty good shape. Uh, I was probably a little bit premature on this clutch, <clears throat> which is okay. I mean, I don't know. I'm kind of the type that likes to just replace something before it fails in the middle of nowhere. Um, I don't know. If you've been following me on Instagram for a while, <laughs> you would have seen the photo of my original clutch back when I did it. Um, but yeah, this one's actually in really good shape-ish. So the, um, the actual catching might actually be in the basket. So I'm gonna keep going, taking each piece individually out, putting it face down, and then uh, I'm gonna check back in with you guys once we get to the end there. Go ahead and just take a look at each one as it comes apart. Um, yeah, so see you guys in a moment. When it comes to like these last couple, it can be a little bit tough to get your fingers on. So just a little bit of a pick. Uh, you could probably use a flat blade screwdriver as well and get that out of there. Uh, yeah, we're getting to that very last one now. So that one's a little bit trickier to get on. Oh no, turns out there's another one after that. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit of patience. You're not trying to damage anything. And... Oh no, there's still a couple more in there. All right, so the stack goes on for a while. All right, just to point this out, once you start getting towards the end, you've got this conical, I don't know, judder spring, whatever they like to call it, and it went in like that so the actual cone went in going this way so we're gonna go ahead put that face down like that and then there is one more that we gotta kind of fish out of there I think I'll get the yeah I'll get the friction first and then I'll dig that other spring back out afterwards that other one should just be flat and uh, if you notice this friction is a different size so that's just something to keep in mind. And uh, yeah, here we go. I'll try and get that to hook on there. If not, I'll get it when I take this uh, center clutch out, but I prefer to get it right now. So for that last washer there, a magnet actually worked pretty good. I just kind of slid down through here, grabbed it, pulled it out. That one is perfectly flat. So go ahead, add that to the pile. And now we can see that inner, um, inner clutch basket, I think it's called. Uh, I'm not seeing any huge signs of wear. Uh, I'm not seeing anything that I can catch a fingernail on. So I'm kind of wondering, Maybe I did kind of go the wrong direction with this diagnosis. Uh, yeah. All right, so the um, center nut there is actually a 30 millimeter. Um, I just have like a standard axle socket kit, so that actually fit pretty good. Um, I don't know what the like imperial equivalent would that be of that, so. So yeah, so, so far you're going to need various 8 mils, 10 mil, and a 30 mil, and that uh, tool from Triumph, which we'll show you in a minute here. 
So that Triumph specialty tool is called an anti-rotation jig. The part number is Tango 3880306. The tool really wasn't very expensive. Um, I don't know. Yeah, basically it's just, it wasn't very expensive, so I ordered it. The actual cost of it was probably cheaper than, um, you know, ordering one of those aftermarket, like, clutch holding tools. And uh, to get that lined up here, basically, yeah, just like that. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna use a pretty hardy bar here, just because I'm working by myself. And then you have to push the brake let pedal to keep the engine from turning, apparently. Okay, so that's a little bit weird. Okay, so you gotta actually like really push on that brake pedal. So this is gonna require a foot and a couple of hands. So I will check back in with you guys once I break that uh, nut free. Okay, so basically I just stood up here, put a bunch of pressure on that brake pedal, held the handlebar, and then I used the bar and I was able to break that free. So they really, it's, it's not a huge torque. Um, like you can, I don't know, like when you're torquing it back together, it's 98 Newton meters. So it's not huge. Sometimes I like to look up the procedure before I do it so that I have an understanding of it. And so I understand if something's not coming apart and it's never been apart before, I might be doing something wrong. The main thing that I was checking for was that this wasn't a reverse thread where, you know, you gotta go right to loosen. It's not like that, you go left to loosen. But it's just, if you're putting a bunch of pressure on it and this thing's not even torqued to as much as like a Honda wheel nut, Okay, something's going wrong if you can't break that free. Just something to think about. All right, so here's where we need to start paying attention to things. I'm gonna go ahead and get that nut off of there. Now this is a one-time use nut, so you're gonna need to replace that. Uh, I guess technically you could reuse it, but why would you want to? And then uh, this piece right here, you see, I don't know if that's gonna show up, but it does say out. So there is an in and an outside to this. And now there's another washer that goes just behind that. So then we're gonna, that, that does not look to go a certain direction. Hopefully that's showing up there. All right, so now we should be able to just slide this out. Perfect. So get that tool out of the way for now. Uh, it's got a little bit of oil on it, so I'll put it right there. All right. So there is a little bit of bluing to my inner clutch basket there. And, oh yeah, there's all sorts of wear in there. Look at that. Let's see here. Let's check on the camera. Get this in there better. Okay, so yeah, you see that? I can catch my fingernail on all of those. Okay, so this inner basket was my problem, and that's why the clutch wasn't releasing properly, is because it had these nice little wear marks. Um, it's just a price to play, price to pay if you're uh, doing clutch ups and stuff like that. Uh, so you know, I'm not going to tell you how to ride your bike, but uh, yeah. Oh, geez, before I lose this on the floor here, there is a washer on the back side of this. Okay, good. I'm glad that didn't hit the ground. <laughs> okay, now that I've got that on the ground there, this is where I'm stopping. I'm going to give a good inspection on this inner clutch basket, or the large clutch basket, I guess you would call it. According to the work instructions from there, you could just rock this, and you'll get this washer to pop out and then you can actually just remove this clutch basket. I'm not going any further than this, um, so this is where I'm stopping. I'm gonna give this a good check. Uh, this, this inner piece right here is like $600, and it's on back order, just in case you were wondering. 
because when I when I was ordering up the inner basket and the pressure plate, and they were only like they were like less than a hundred dollars each. I was like, oh okay, like let's get the big one too. And then they were like, oh yeah, it's like five hundred and thirty eight dollars. And I was like, well, let's not get that. <laughs> All right, so unfortunately we've hit a major snag here. This outside basket is extremely, it's quite notched. Like you can catch each and every single one of these. I don't, I don't know if that's gonna show up for you, but um, the problem is, is they're hardened. So if I file it like you would on a dirt bike, I'm now getting to that softer metal. So it's gonna notch out even quicker. So. I, I don't know, I'm gonna have to make some phone calls here, but uh, yeah, like these, these inside ones aren't as bad. Like I can sort of feel them with the screwdriver, but like this one right here, like that's, that's an actual like ridge and not all of them are the same. So yeah, so that, that's, so the actual clutch wasn't the issue it's the baskets that are causing me to hang up with the clutch uh just how it goes right um this isn't triumph's fault it's kind of my fault it's been a pretty hard hundred thousand kilometers on this basket uh what do you do right so oh well all right so as i was saying we're just going to rock this and dislodge that bearing somehow or maybe not maybe we're just going to take it with us according to the work instructions you just kind of i don't know push on it a little bit i guess okay 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 if i use the magnets i can kind of get it to stay in place a little bit and then we'll hold that, put that down like that, put the magnet away, and then all right, there we go. Oh, that bearing almost slid out. Okay, so there's the basket out. Ah, and I guess that's your oil pump drive. Cool. So, I see that, well, that doesn't move. All right, so that goes like that. This is my first time taking something like this apart, so I just kind of want to make sure I pay extra close attention. I'm not 100% sure why you have to install that afterwards. Uh, my guess is, is just because it won't uh, slide in like with the bearings in it, cause you kind of have to hook it in and engage the uh, crank sprocket. So this is now removed and I've got to call my local dealer now and see where I'm at for parts and price wise. While I'm waiting on a call back from the dealership, I'm gonna go ahead and put the bearing into that new pressure plate. It comes separate, so you will have to get bearing T1170067. And I had thrown this in the freezer for the morning, so it's gonna be ready to go in. Now I did take a look at the old one and the writing is towards the inside. Now the thing about this is, is you don't actually have to like press this one in. You can just use your fingers and kind of work it around and it will eventually go. So I wish I could tell you that this uh, isn't much later on, but it is. My outer basket has arrived. I decided to also replace that bearing that slides in there. Uh, this bushing is back order, super long time away. It's not very expensive, um, but I'm definitely not gonna wait like a multiple bunch of weeks for it to show up so basically just you know double check yours make sure that it's looking good no nicks or burrs and stuff in it this bearing here is tango 1175100 and uh i'm going to put a little bit of like engine assembly lube 
on the bearing as well as on the bushing and a little bit inside of uh, where the drum rides. All right, this next video or next segment, just due to the fact that I have to um, touch all this grease and stuff like that, it's all gonna kind of be one shot. So it might be a little bit painful, but don't forget that these notches on your bushing were facing outwards. So we're gonna put those two together. Hopefully I can get that in like that. And then on the back side of this outer basket, there's these little dimples, dowel locators, whatever you wanna call them. And then when you look on your oil pump, you've also got the same things. So you've gotta line those up. So I'm going to put this right here on the paper towel. Then I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna make sure this sits somewhere where it can't fall. And then we're going to line this up and without bashing it around, we're going to try and, there we go. Okay, so the, the teeth are meshed on the outer gear. It's seated on those uh, dowels, fingers, whatever you wanna call it. And now we're gonna see about sliding this in. Okay, nothing to it. And according to the work instructions, it's properly seated when the bearing and the bushing are flush. So this basket is in and it's looking proper. So that is good. I'm glad that went together nicely. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna take our center clutch, which is part number Tango 1174200. And then don't forget that there was a washer that went behind it. We're actually going to just put a little smear of this kind of just between uh, both sides there, just why not? And then we are going to install that into the bike. Sorry, I'm just trying to do this as I work, but I'm also gonna put a little bit on those splines just so that I've got good coverage. Um, part of the reason I'm making sure everything's well lubricated is uh, the bike's probably gonna be sitting for a while after I finish this. I might fire it up just to make sure that everything kind of works. But uh, yeah, for the most part, like this thing will just be sitting. So, I mean, I guess you could put the washer in there. So yeah, let's, let's do that. We'll put the washer against here and then uh, we will put this center basket in there. And then perfect, that's looking nice and seated. So now we're gonna install that anti-rotation tool, anti-rotation jig as they call it, and then we'll have to put the nuts and washers into there. Just in case you forgot, you just slide that uh, anti-rotation jig in there. You can line up this center clutch, like rotate the center clutch in order to line this up. And then uh, apparently we've got a visitor. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're gonna uh, get that, the two washers and the nut in there. So if you're like me and you're not a huge fan of reusing certain kind of disposable hardware, um, like the nut is absolutely not reusable. You can if you want. The service manual says don't. I'm saying don't, so don't. The part number for the nut is Tango 1170106. And then uh, the service manual also says that you have to replace this washer that has out written on it. The part number for that is Tango 1179999. And then uh, just because, you know, if you felt like spending the dollar seventy-five or whatever it costs, the washer behind that is Tango 1171282. So we're going to go ahead, get these in there. Don't forget, 
it's the flat washer first. So just like that. Then it's the conical washer, making sure that out is out. And then we're going to start this nut. So now don't forget to um, hold the brake while you're torquing this. And uh, you're going to torque this to 98 Newton meters, which is roughly like 73 foot pounds. Um, I don't know, my, my torque wrench goes to 98. You definitely don't need a digital one. I just brought this one home from work. Uh, you can definitely use one of your standard click ones. So get this torqued, double check it, and then we will check back in. So now comes the awkward part. If you look closely, you're gonna notice that there's an indent missing out of the end of that shaft. And if you remember when we removed this, there was a little, little indent there. So you're gonna line that up carefully, making sure you're not hitting the center basket. And then you're just going to notch that in there. So it doesn't take a whole lot, just a swift little whack like that. And now you can see that the end of that nut, hopefully you can see that, is kind of folded into that little groove. That's kind of a way of like locking it in place. And then that conical washer kind of keeps some tension on it. All right, so now you take the tool out of there, reach over top of the bike, put it back into neutral, and make sure that the center spins freely and smoothly. Awesome. I'm really glad that uh, that worked out pretty well. I hate when you take a lot of stuff apart and then you got to sit for like a week and you know, you, you're always hoping like I look at the pictures, you know, in the service manual, but anyways, I'm getting off topic. You're not here for that. <laughs> so when you pull your clutch out of the box, it's not going to be correct. Like it's not going to be assembled the way that you need it to. So what you're going to do is you're basically just going to kind of build it backwards. So then you're going to just set it all down and then you can just go straight into the bike from there. But first we've got to assemble it and then we've got to measure it. I don't know why they word this in such a, like how well do you understand English? The spec is 42.2 millimeters plus 0.34 millimeters or minus 0.66 millimeters. That is such a weird way of explaining what the spec is. What they actually mean to say is the clutch pack needs to be 41.54 millimeters at the smallest or 42.54 millimeters at the largest. So now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna kinda hold the clutch pack together and then you're going to take your digital caliper and you're going to measure it out. And you're not, you're not squeezing the hell out of it. You know, you're just kind of getting, getting a measurement. Mine's coming in at 42.67 millimeters. Now, I kind of expected this because my last clutch pack from them was just ever so slightly big. I, it might have even been like the exact same measurement. Now, I ran it, and as you can see, my old clutch was in excellent shape. It was the basket that gave out, and it certainly wasn't that minuscule amount of oversize that took out the basket. It was me riding like an idiot. So I'm gonna run it. Um, if you absolutely need to, you can swap out one of these like two millimeter thick steels for another 1.6 millimeter thick steel. They only give you one in their kit. Uh, you can call up Triumph and you can order another 1.6 millimeter. Uh, however, you knock off another point, uh, what would that be? That'd be another, yeah, 0.4 of a millimeter. You're gonna be pretty low into the spec at that point. So it'd actually be better just to have the slightly bigger clutch pack. And when I say slightly bigger, I mean like we're like 0.13 of a millimeter over spec. If you're coming out and you're like 0.3 of a millimeter over spec, 
double check that you're measuring it correct. And then uh, from there, you're, you're gonna need to order one of those steels, unfortunately. For the frictions and steels, there's a little bit of conflicting information. You can run Barnett clutches dry. However, the work instructions say to put a smear of clean, you know, clean engine oil on them. So whatever, I just kind of did it by like the factory spec. It's not gonna hurt anything. What I did was I took three Ziploc bags, freezer size, just kind of stacked them up, or sorry, put them inside each other. And then I uh, just basically like poured a bunch of oil all over it and kind of let it sit for a while. So they should be pretty well soaked. Um, you can use like an ice cream pail, which I've done in previous videos, but uh, you know, I, I think this way will work. And then you don't have like a container of oil to dispose of. You can kind of just pour this right into your um, used oil container and then it's kind of, you know, easier cleanup. Just to quickly point out, I did set this in in the way that it's gonna go into the bike. So I've got that smallest friction on top and then I've got that um, smallest steel at the bottom just so that I don't have to screw around with the bag. I can just kind of pull it out, put it in and uh, you know, it just makes life a little bit easier. So you're gonna have some oil dripping as you're taking those frictions and putting them in. So what I did is I just kind of put some paper towels down and then uh, I'm just gonna show you for like the first little bit here. Um, and then from there, you guys can kind of figure it out on your own. <laughs> so first you gotta put in that, or actually, hold on here. First, we're gonna do those little uh, judder springs or whatever you wanna call them. So if you forgot, the flat one goes in first, and that one seats all the way at the bottom. Then you take this conical looking one, and you want the edges curling out towards you. So then you're gonna put this in. That's all right. Perfect. Now we're gonna take our small friction, we're gonna put that on and make sure that that is all the way down there. And then take a quick look around, make sure you're not catching that uh, little judder spring, whatever you wanna call it. You could put the judder springs in afterwards if you really wanted to, uh, not a big deal, like they do seem to clear it. And then you're gonna start with, or go to your steel. And you're just gonna slide that in, make sure it's all the way down there. And now just keep repeating that. Friction, steel, friction, steel, all the way until you get to the end. So unfortunately, I forgot to tell you the part number for the clutch pressure plate. It is Tango 1174600. That's that part number for the clutch pressure plate. Now you're gonna take your 10 mil and unfortunately you're gonna touch these down just little bit by little bit, get the spring starting to compress, move on to the next one. And then once it comes to like really compressing the spring, so like once you get a little bit further than this, you're gonna basically do like two turns per bolt and just keep working your way around. It's gonna be painful, but that's just the way it is. Um, I would avoid the use of like a drill unless you happen to have like a, a drill that you can really dial the pressure down. 
because it would really be a shame to have like you know you wind it in a little bit too far and over torque it or snap something that would be a very bad time once you do get these all seated down you're going to torque these to 10 newton meters and like with everything else once you do torque it down in a crisscross pattern just make one more final little loop and then you will be good to go perfect now make sure to clean both surfaces well this one here you're gonna have to be a little bit careful of because oil will drip down so try and work somewhat quick give it a wipe then we're gonna put the gasket on the gasket that you're gonna need is Tango 1260141. And uh, you know, basically as I had mentioned before, we're gonna give the gasket surface a good wipe real quick. And then we're going to get our bolts ready. So I'm just gonna put this here. And then I'm gonna set aside the two long ones so that I can immediately put those into the ones with the dowels. We're gonna put a little bit of blue Loctite on all those bolts. Uh, once I get this gasket set on there, I will jump back in with you guys for when we gotta hook this uh, pressure release arm. All right, so you got your gasket set on the dowels. You made sure that there was no oil on it. Now, what we have to do is we have to kinda catch, catch the end of this with this. So I'm gonna make sure that it's somewhat out of the way. And then I'm going to slide this in, somewhat line it up with the dowels. And there we go. Okay, so now, all right, that catches. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna immediately put the two bolts for the dowel in which is that one and that one. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just lightly touch these down so that the um, cover doesn't like come out a little bit and have the risk of oil getting on that gasket. So basically I just touch that down, same deal with this one. I'm just gonna literally just lightly seat it. Just one sec here. All right, there we go. So now we can go ahead and get all of them in. That one that's a real pain, just leave that till last. We're gonna go ahead, just get them all in, get them touched uh, in a nice crisscross pattern. But yeah, leave, leave that really tough one till the absolute last. Now, before I torque all of these other ones, I am gonna start this one by hand just to make sure that nothing happened where the uh, bolt hole is no longer lined up. You never know, like maybe the gasket shifted a little bit. So yeah, just get that threaded in as far as you can with your fingers. And then we're gonna torque all of the other ones in a crisscross pattern to 10 Newton meters. We'll tighten this one last. So you guessed it, you know exactly what's about to happen. You're gonna grab your wrench, and then you're gonna have to use the open end since you can't fit the uh, closed end over it yet. And just little by little, you gotta work that in there. And uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to torque this one, so you're gonna have to uh, just put it snug with a wrench. So, have fun with that. <laughs> Once you get it touched down and you can get the closed end of the wrench onto it, you're not like tightening the hell out of this thing. You know, like if you remember with all the other ones, like 10 Newton meters really isn't that much. It's less than a hundred inch pounds. So don't be trying to get two hands in there, pulling up on that as hard as you can. Basically just whatever you can do with like your pointer finger and thumb and make sure that you're on there well. And then yeah, that's that's gonna be plenty on that. Um, yeah, so at least now the cover is done. So now you can go ahead, get your clutch cable hooked on. And in case you forgot, basically you just go straight through it and there you go. And now we're gonna set our clutch cable adjustment. Uh, so I forgot to film it, unfortunately, but basically 
you want to move this part of the cable out. Um, I probably went just a touch far on that, but that's okay. Uh, then you're going to come up to, no, nope, not around this side. You're going to come around to this side and then you're going to wind this out and just keep on going for a little while. And, uh, just one sec. I'll check in with you once I get there. All right. So now that you've got that wound out quite a ways, um, I can't remember the spec off the top of my head, but it's basically about a dime or maybe not even a nickel. Uh, it's, I don't know, not much. I hope this shows up, but basically you can see if you pull out on the cable slightly and then work your clutch a little bit, you can see it move just ever so slightly. That's what you're looking for. And then we're going to actuate that clutch a little bit, make sure everything's moving nicely. It absolutely is. So I almost had an oops. Don't forget to uh, tighten this with a 12 millimeter. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna wanna make sure you tighten up both sides so that that clutch cable isn't going anywhere. Sorry about that. Take your four millimeter Allen, a little dab of blue on these bolts. And then we're going to install the three of these and torque them to five Newton meters. All right, we're on the final stretch here. So making sure that the spring for your brake switch didn't come off. You're gonna go ahead, get some blue Loctite on those bolts, grab your T40 and with the use of two hands, apparently, a third would be helpful. You can get these bolts started. All right, and you're gonna torque these ones to 15 Newton meters. All right, so it's all done. I know I had said that I wasn't gonna fire it up because originally I was gonna do the valves next and then uh, I would change the oil. But, you know, this clutch ended up being a little bit more work than I thought it was. It had to sit apart for over a week while I waited on parts. There might not be a need to do valves if I fire this thing up and suddenly something grenades inside there because I assembled it wrong. So before you fire it up, even though you're in neutral, make sure there's nothing on your back wheel. Like I always leave my brake lock on even when it's just sitting in the garage. Make sure there's nothing on your back wheel. Make sure you're not in gear because even if you pull in the clutch, those plates are probably going to be sticky until they get like super coated with oil. So if, you know, make sure your back wheel is off the ground, everything like that. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that's looking good. Not feeling anything too rough in there, so that's all right. Perfect. I'm gonna let that run for a bit, get the uh, oil and stuff all over it. Once it's warm to the touch, I'll try putting it in here. All right, so make sure you're in off-road mode so that you don't throw a bunch of ABS codes. Make sure your back wheel is off the ground. And then we're gonna put it in gear. And, oh, look at that. Nice, so it's actually totally disengaging now. That is awesome. All right, so that is very good news because before, even when I pulled the clutch in all the way, that wheel was still spinning pretty good. And like I could stop it with my foot, but it took a lot of, a lot of force. You could tell that the clutch wasn't releasing. I hope that uh, this disaster of a video helps you guys out, at least shows you some of the stuff, at least the parts that you need. I really didn't account for needing the outer basket and it taking over a week to get here. So that kind of really threw me off because it was kind of suddenly like I was more so trying to remember where everything went so it didn't flow as smooth. If you're new to this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And as always, thanks for taking the time and watching.